Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about EIGRP's graceful shutdown option. Now, this is not something that I want to say is really configurable, even though there is a command you can tell uh, EIGRP to essentially shut down, but this isn't really like a feature where you would turn it on or off. It's built into EIGRP, EIGRP supports it, and it's actually really, really cool. What it does is it actually allows two neighbors, let's say you're performing maintenance and you have an EIGRP adjacency between R1 and 2. Let's say you have another EIGRP adjacency maybe between R, uh, R1 and 3. What it actually allows you to do is tell your neighbor, so if I was going to do maintenance here on R2, it allows me to tell my neighbor of R1, hey, I'm going away for a while, I'm going to go and I'm going to shut down myself, go ahead and, and reconverge, recalculate, and use another path maybe to this land segment over here. So graceful shutdown is not something that's really made for link failures, right? There's other options that you can use for that, such as BFD, bidirectional forwarding detection, right? You can use BFD for those quick convergence um, issues where you have a link drop, some, you know, knucklehead walks into your data center and unplugs your, your, uh, your cable. But graceful shutdown is more of a maintenance feature. It's more of an option that you can use to say, hey, I'm going away for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and reboot myself. You're going to reboot a router, for example, and rather than forming, you know, rather than having an abrupt change. I mean, let's bring this into real life. You're going to perform maintenance on router two. Router one has two paths to router one and router three. Let's say he has equal cost paths to that land segment, but you need to perform some type of maintenance on router two. If you go in and you just reboot this guy, right? You just go ahead and say reload and you reload them, what's going to happen is that here, yes, the link is going to drop. But let's say you're using the default timers. That means you have a five second hello timer, right? Which means that you have a three, time, three times the hello, which is going to be 15 seconds hold down, which means that you run the, I want to say opportunity, uh, I don't want to say any bad words, but you run the opportunity to continue forwarding or trying to forward packets towards your router that, that you've now rebooted and who knows how long it's going to take to come up. Bottom line is you're going to take 15 seconds of possibly sending packets to essentially a black hole, right? And router one may send half those packets this way, half those packets this way, and you, you run the risk of having a real issue, right? With graceful shutdown, you could actually just say, hey, listen, I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Don't use me. Router one will say, yep, no problem. 10-4, gotcha. Drop the link and go ahead and start forwarding traffic over his other direction. So let's take a look at the number of different ways that EIGRP is going to essentially shut itself down. Let's filter out our packet capture here for just uh, EIGRP. We'll try to catch the packet. It, sometimes it's a little difficult. By the way, depending on your version of uh, iOS, depending on what version you're using, you're, you're going to see one of two things. Either you're actually going to see a goodbye message. So if your iOS supports the actual goodbye, what you're going to see is goodbye received. Or you may see a peer termination received, so peer termination received. And in this case, what this is going to be is actually your K values uh, all set to 255. So inside of one of your hello packets, you'll actually see the K values set to 255. So it's going to be either one or the other. You could see both if you're running two different uh, two different types or two different versions of routers. You could see both. But these are the different options you'll see. In our version of iOS that I'm using, we're going to see pure termination uh, received. And then inside the packet, if we can find it, we're going to see all the 255s, uh, all the K values rather, set to 255s. Okay, so let's get EIGRP. We'll get named mode and classic mode. We'll do named mode over on two. We'll wake up here, config T, router EIGRP. We'll just call this guy name, address family IPv4, autonomous system. Uh, we'll just say one, and we'll say network 10.1.2.2, all zeros. And let's say topology base, redistribute connected. We'll just have a little bit of fun there. And we'll say, Router oh, config T, router EIGRP1, network 10.1.2.1, all zeros, redistribute, connected. Okay, so we should have packets. Good, we got our hello packets, good deal. And we have an adjacency. Do show IP route EIGRP. So we have routes, right? No big deal. This is exactly what we expected. Now, Suppose again that I want to go and I want to do some type of change on router two. And I say, well, you know what? We have to essentially say to, you know, to R1 that we're going to do changes. So let's go into interface E00 and let's shut it down so we stop sending traffic. But this didn't really do anything because check out what happens. EIGRP dies on router two, but you look at router one and I could say do show IP EIGRP neighbors and 
according to router one, I still have a neighbor. In fact, here's my whole time expiring. It took 15 seconds for that to actually clear out of EIGRP. So there was 15 seconds there where I was actually sending traffic or could have been sending traffic to router two. And that's not essentially what I want. So let's go over to router two. Let's no shut this guy. And so there's another way that we can do this. In fact, there's, there's, there's more than just the, the two ways I'm going to show you, but I'm just going to show you the ways that I've, I've done it and seen it. One way that I've actually seen this done, I personally do not do it, but I've seen it, uh, is to remove the network statement that applies to that interface. So for example, do show run, uh, we'll say section router EIGRP. If I have multiple network statements in here, and those network statements are applying to the slash 32 interfaces like you see here, one option that I've seen done is to remove that network interface, right? So if I go into my process or remove that network statement, for example, when I do this, check out what happens over on router two. The minute I do this, I'm gonna head over to router two and take a look. We see peer termination received. Now let's quickly go ahead over to our packet capture and see if we can actually find that packet. We may not be able to, let's see. Uh, we're still sending hellos here, so we may not be able to find it. Uh, this is us joining, let's see, parameters. What we're looking for here is we're looking for all the K values set to, well, this would have come from router one, right? So let's start checking all the router one update packets. Uh, there we go, peer termination received. So we get the peer termination, and if we look at the K values, we'll see that they're all set to 255. Right, so this is essentially how we know that we are getting a peer termination over from router one because what router one actually does when we went in and we said, okay, no network statement. Okay, so we went in here onto router one and we said no network. What router one actually did was he sent an, he sent this hello packet with all of the K values set to 255 and that's what essentially let the neighbors know that hey we're no longer going to be forming an adjacency. What I personally do not like about this configuration standard is that you can have multiple different network statements to show run section router EIGRP. I mean suppose you have um, you know 15, a dozen, who cares? You have more than one, right? Section router EIGRP. Like I said in other videos, I've been in environments where people have hundreds of EIGRP neighbors, and maybe they're running, you know, uh, on a on a core switch. You know, maybe they're running, you know, 30 or 40 different SVIs, and they're running all that on EIGRP in their enterprise network, right? I don't want to go in and remove 47 network statements, right? And so the easier option for me is to actually just say shut down. What this is going to do is actually shut down the EIGRP process, and you'll see that from router 2's perspective, he essentially gets the same peer termination. So if we scroll down here again, let's try to find that uh, that packet here. So we'll expand parameters, and that was there we go. So you can see here, this is that same peer termination, and it set all those K values to 255, right? So this is a much better option for me to actually shut down the EIGRP process because let me actually do this one more time. We'll shut it down. And if I say do show run section router EIGRP, you can see that my actual network configuration uh, stays intact. So all of my network statements, everything that I'm doing stays perfectly 100% intact. All I need to do is go ahead and say shut down the process. And once that peer termination is received, once I actually see the process shut down, my neighbors are going to stop sending me traffic because on their end, they've received that peer termination, okay? So that's one way to do this, right? You can do the same thing in named mode. So let me bring this guy back up. It's essentially the same exact place. So we'll say do show run section router EIGRP. Let's head into our address family. And all we have to do is say shut down and it will essentially do the same thing. In fact, it's gonna say shut down, we'll go over to router one and we see the peer termination received. If we head over to uh, router, our packet capture, we see the hello message coming from router two. And here we see the peer termination with all the K values set to 255, right? So that's how you can do this across between named mode and classic mode. Again, in different versions of iOS, you could issue the shutdown command and you may see a goodbye message. It's essentially the same thing. Okay, but this is how you can perform maintenance on your devices that are supporting EIGRP, gracefully shut down the process so that you're not just going to start for 15, 20 seconds, or even five seconds, sending traffic and black holing it on a device you're doing maintenance on.